a small PM Research model steam engine part 5, completing the reassembly of the engine, adjusting the valve timing and painting the flywheel. As I mentioned previously in the last episode, I am using the cross-headed bolts, but I'm going to change those for hexagon bolts once I make some. Once I'd fitted most of the parts and bolted things together, I tried to turn the engine over, but it wouldn't work. The piston was hitting the rear cylinder cover on the inside which just means that the piston rod is screwed too far into the crosshead. I haven't tightened the lock nut on the piston rod which holds it against the crosshead, and here using the point of my screwdriver I'm illustrating that it isn't tight. If I push the piston towards the front of the cylinder, you can clearly see the problem when I look at the cylinder. It's quite important to make sure that the piston travels an equal distance. It's also important that the piston is the same distance from the cylinder covers at both ends. Here you can see, with the piston pushed fully forwards, it's nowhere near. It's nearly halfway down the cylinder. The tool that I'm using here is an old box key. I reduced the diameter of the end of it so that it fitted in the recess of the piston, allowing me to use the nut that's on the end of the piston rod to unscrew it from the crosshead. A very simple job. Once I was happy that the piston was in the right place, I tightened the lock nut up against the crosshead to hold everything in place. I had to estimate the position of the piston at the other end of the cylinder, because I can't see it. In this clip I'm fitting the front cylinder cover, temporarily using the cross-headed machine screws. What's about to follow is the application of Sod's Law or Murphy's Law. As you can see everything's going well, the engine's going together beautifully. Or at least it was until I got to the very last of the machine screws, which was surprisingly too long. My fault really, I didn't take note that these bolts were not all the same length. In the end I had to remove both of the crosshead guides because guess what, the last bolt of all was the one that was the short one. And that's the way things work out very frequently, I've never really figured this out. You come in towards the end of the job, it's the very last bolt or nut or whatever, and it goes wrong. The four bolts that hold the front cylinder cover in place are shorter than the rest. But everything's okay now. A quick checklist. Yes, the crankshaft's in place, the eccentric's in the right place, and the connecting rod is connected. In this clip, I'm refixing the crosshead guides in place. A quick word of caution. When working with miniature steam engines, remember it is not a car cylinder head. Do not over tighten the bolts. Bad things are likely to happen. You can actually distort brass or gun metal parts by over tightening them, and the worst case scenario is the bolt snaps off in the hole. Forgive me if I don't give you a practical demonstration of this. This clip shows the valve, and it's not a slide valve, it's a piston valve. And the question is, when setting the timing, how do you know where the piston valve's position is in the valve chest? The answer is quite simple. Can you see the two grub screws, which I'm actually going to replace with hexagon bolts? They're actually there because the original drillings of the ports needed to be plugged after the valve chest had been drilled. I'm sure you've guessed it by now, if I remove the grub screws, I'll be able to see where the piston valve is relative to the ports. In this assembly, I've left it as it was, I assume the previous builder put it in the right place. I'll find out very shortly. Really, I should have removed these grub screws and done it by eye, but it's such a small engine, getting the camera in there would have proved difficult. And for that reason, I'm going to do it the way I normally do it, by ear. I've connected an airline to the inlet of the steam chest, and when I open the air valve, I get a nice hissing noise. You can't really see what I'm doing, so I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm adjusting the position of the eccentric relative to the crank pin at the other end of the engine. And it keeps trying to run, but it's a bit lumpy. In a moment, I get the setting just about right. And then this happens. After listening to the engine, I didn't like the sound of it. It wasn't running very free. It was sort of fighting against itself a little bit. I found that the engine ran best of all if I set the valve to admit the steam or the compressed air as the piston was exactly at top dead centre at both sides. Listen to the difference.
It's not quite 100% yet, and I tweaked about with it, trying different settings to find out which ones were good and which ones were bad. In the end though, I put the position of the eccentric just about back where it was in the last run. So now I'm going to run the engine and stop talking. And even in slow motion it seems to run quite well. I'm using some wet to dry sandpaper to clean up the edge of the flywheel because I missed this bit when I had it in the lathe. And it's definitely not good to have sharp edges on flywheels. This small engine is very powerful for its size and I think it's quite a lovely thing. Apart from the hideous cross headed machine screws I had to get that in one more time. I think the timing's okay because it runs well fast and slow. Here's a bit more slow motion and in this clip the engine is running on very low air pressure. I've just removed the flywheel because I'm going to paint it and look the engine even runs without the flywheel. Time to paint the flywheel. I'm going to use some HMG paint satin black for this. And as I was painting it, it looked okay. As this is satin black, it's not going to stay shiny. And I think that the flywheel needs to be gloss black. I'll use this satin black as an undercoat. Because it didn't look quite as good once it had dried. Here's the flywheel halfway through the drying process and you can see what I mean. That's it for this episode, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.